Wow, y'all. I am starting off this mental health vlog yet again. This is version two. Trying to calm down, which sucks. Because I made so many good points in the first take that I thought I did. That I'm probably not going to remember. And I'm already upset. And this is what happens when you don't do your due diligence. But I'd like to start off by saying thank you to everybody who reached out to me to keep these going. I said in the earlier take on this that my issues were trying to find that balance of talking about mental health, revealing what I'm going through, but not putting my home life in the jeopardy doing it. And I wanted to come across as open and honest about that because far too many people are using mental health as an act, as a way to pretend to be manic or depressed or something to get them attention. And I made the point about President Biden's town hall, hall last night and what he said about mental health and why it's important for us to be seen especially given how the last two years have been. But it's frustrating that a lot of people only see us after tragedy. They only see us when people get on camera and want to just cry. And the point I was making earlier, which I'm really upset that I sat at this camera for 20 minutes talking and didn't record any sound, is that when I am at a manic first, especially when it's a manic low, the last thing I want to do is get on camera and cry for you. Now, I'm not saying that people with mental health issues don't suffer from any other problems and can't show emotion openly. That would be a lie. But I'm telling you right now that a lot of you are being sold and act by people who think mental health issues is something they can do for clicks and views. And it's not okay. When I am having mania, it is a mental toll. There are times where I feel like I can do anything and being a writer is the worst because you have so many ideas racing through your brain. You have so much energy, you think, to do different things, but you're only going at a snail's pace, actually. And you'll be lucky if anything even comes out of your mind that's coherent. That is the reality of mania for so many of us. It feels great when it's high. It feels like you can do anything. You get so much done, you think. But in reality, you're barely getting anything done. And then there's the opposite of that. The manic low. And no, it's not I'm going to be around people and let them know how sad I am. It is I am in bed in pain. Or I am lashing out because I want people to hurt a little bit the way I'm hurting. And that's why I distance myself when I know I'm having a true manic low because I don't want to do that. My partner puts up with a lot because of that. And that's another thing I need people to understand. Having that emotional support system, especially in these last two years, since I am not able to go get the help that I was getting regularly because my paranoia does not really want me out there with other people, even with the vaccination that I got, because I went and got two shots. And that's something that you anti-vax types need to understand. I am a paranoid schizophrenic, and even I know it is better to be inoculated against a deadly pandemic than not to. But one of the things I needed to stress is that I don't get out the house at all right now. Anytime I do step out and I cough, that is agony for me because I just know I caught something. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh, that's, that's just natural. That's normal. You, you just go through hypochondria. No. When you have paranoid schizophrenia, anything can end up being the end of your world. And a lot of you don't realize that. And then you pair it with manic thoughts where your emotions are on high constantly. I need you to see the reality of the situation because too many of you fall for a big old okie doke, especially here on YouTube. 
some of y'all's favorites like to play these games about, oh, I'm just mentally, I'm just mentally unwell. I'm having a nervous breakdown by my music. Seriously, y'all. I'm not saying that creative types don't have that energy. I know that it takes a lot to have constant stories and lyrics in your head. You're in your own little world. And I talked about my diagnosis as a sociopath and why I felt the need to express, especially on social media, getting that diagnosis. I also, in the sad 20 minutes that didn't happen because my sound wasn't working, explain why I feel Black women tend to gravitate towards sociopathic tendencies. And it's not an overgeneralization. Every friend of mine that has gone through the same experience of the combination of dealing with sexism, racism, they might have had extreme introversion like I did as a child and grew up in a gregarious family like I did as a child. I talked about how having to deal with that, finding ways to detach myself, and then other outside stress factors, including being assaulted as a teenager, getting into unnecessary fights. I learned how to detach myself from situations. And now I do it so much that I don't even feel it at times when I do it. That, to me, is why I got diagnosed as a sociopath. And some of you don't understand what that term means. So you'd get upset with somebody who you think is nice because I try to be nice on social media, says that a doctor gave me a very apt diagnosis. So I need you to see the reality of the situation because I'm tired of y'all speaking for me and showing that you honestly don't care to learn the differences in mental health matters. I know some people go, well, detaching is not just a part of being a sociopath. And yeah, that's right. But the reason I detach is because I detest society. I've never hid that. Some of you think I'm being cutesy or telling a joke when I say that. Some of you think that, oh, you know, you're just an introvert. I like to prefer the term extreme introvert because right now the situation I have been lucky enough to be set up with is my son goes to virtual school. Greg now works from home. I do this. We do not have to interact with people on a regular basis. The few friends that I really legitimately consider friends, no. Once 10 hits her limit, we're probably not going to hear from her for a while. Don't reach out because she's not going to reach back. Don't piss her off because she will cut you off. I am not the kind of person you really want to be friends with, yet people don't believe it until they try it. I am not the kind of friend you can just call up willy-nilly to chit-chat for hours. I don't have any interest in that. I can fiend interest via Twitter because it's just typing. But once I hit my daily limit of intake, I'm done. I'm going to go do whatever I can to just mentally recharge and not deal with people. And I don't think people understand that. I want you to see the reality of mental health. But I, like I said earlier, have to be mindful of the stuff I put out there because it's not just my life affected. And that is the reality of people not only getting help, but actually talking about mental health. As long as my child is a minor, I am not going to put anything out there online, especially that could potentially lead somebody in my family to call DCF on me or lead some supposedly well-meaning person to act if I can't take care of my son. I do not think people understand how hard it is for somebody with mental health just trying to live our best life. But with the constant fear of people who don't bother to understand what we're going through, messing with us. Like I said before, growing up with somebody who is a master manipulator, who is very verbally abusive, really shaped my attitude on taking care of my home first. 
making sure my child never goes through what I went through. And it isn't easy. I have to control my emotional outbursts with him. And it's not fun to know that your mom will sometimes close herself off because she's just so exhausted mentally that she doesn't know what else to do. And then to have a mom, in my case, who knows how to threaten you, knows how to make you at your most upset, even when you've worked so hard to keep calm, I am doing my best not to put him through that. So when I say I want to do these vlogs and share with y'all what this is like, I have to be mindful that this is not just my life. But I also want people who don't have that support system, who are struggling, whether you're a mom or a dad or just somebody by yourself to know that you're seen and not just in a town hall speech. We exist. And our illness, because it's called mental illness, is that. It's not a choice. It's not a toggle we could turn on and off. You can't just control it, but you can get help for it. And we need more advocacy for help. We need our local politicians to be invested in a budget so that we have centers to go to when we need help with talking. Medicine that's affordable for us when we're having severe manic or schizoid or any of these mental health issues because they all matter. We need to stop mocking people with social anxieties and issues that cause them mental and even physical pain dealing with normal everyday things. Some of you think it's funny because we've only seen a Hollywood or even animated version of what a lot of us are struggling to. And to you, it's a butt of a joke when somebody gets nervous at the sound of a phone or feels like the world is closing in on them when they're crowded around people. But this is a reality for so many of us. And then there are some of us who are just so, we've never really been a part of society and we are just so fed up with even trying that we completely mentally detach from society. And that is a reality of mental health. So when you see your favorite artist or your favorite YouTuber on here acting the fool and then going, sorry, I'm just being manic. Y'all need to question that because it's like I said, even if they don't have kids, even if their careers really aren't going to be destroyed by it, most of us who suffer from mental health issues, when we are going through the stuff that we have been going through, we don't want to be around people. And we're sure as heck not going to be on camera doing this. I'm tired of being the butt of people's jokes. I'm tired of my reality being used as cosplay. If you care about mental health, if you are watching this, if you follow me, ask questions, look things up, and do not second guess actual professionals unless you're a professional yourself. Because the most people who tried to question me on my social pathic tendencies for people who don't have any real connection to psychology at all. And they asked me some personal questions that even if I wanted to admit truthfully online, I'm not going to do that. I'm smart enough to know that the stuff I put out there could be used against me. So you asking me about how I love or who I love or whether I feel love, that's none of your damn business. But if you know so much about sociopathy, you probably know the answer to that. I hate to be like this, but anger tends to come to me easily too. I said that in the now probably going to be deleted 20 minutes of me just sitting there in front of the camera thinking sound was going to come through. The honest truth about my emotions is I don't control how it comes out. The only emotion that I feel readily is anger. I'm working on it, but it's not easy because so many things piss me off and it really is the easiest emotion to feel. The next probably is sadness, but even that doesn't come out when it should be. 
And that is the reality of dealing with schizoaffective disorder. That is the reality of dealing with sociopathy. And that is why I'm going to reiterate, if you watch this, please don't just share it. Reach out. Ask questions in the comments. Reach out to me on social media. I might not be able to get to you immediately, but if you're sincere and wanting to know more about mental health, I will do my best to answer it. If you're just fishing to enhance your acting skills, I'm going to shut you down because I think you need to learn this about sociopaths. Y'all give us what we need to know about you within the way you interact. Because we are constantly analyzing the way people talk to us or type to us on social media, we have your number. And if that unnerves you, good. But it's the reality of being the way I am. People constantly give me their vulnerabilities, constantly let me know how I can handle them or choose not to handle them in a situation. So if you're going to come to me about mental health issues, please come correct. And my interaction with you will tell you whether or not I believe you're actually genuinely interested in learning about mental health. I'm going to get ready to wrap this up because tonight I will be doing a live session on Twitch, 7 o'clock p.m. EST. I took two weeks off, but I do intend to do more of these. I don't know how much more of my past I'll diverge that devolve into in regards to my family. I like to try to keep my stories in a way where I don't have to deal with them. But I need to talk about certain influences that shape the way I am today. So as I do these vlogs, I will be trying to find that balance. But I do want to thank everybody who hit me up and said, hey, Tim, we really miss these. We want to see you do more. We want you to talk openly and frankly about mental health. I'm going to try my best. I can't promise you that I'm always going to have the energy or want to do these. But I do agree with the people who said that if we don't start speaking up for ourselves, too many people who aren't really caring about us are going to be our voice. And I can't afford to let that be the case anymore. So I thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.